visionary, Hello. she digital. Hello. She says, she says listen. listen. I'm Simona Shimanovic, I'm a digital art director and uh, last year I started freelancing and I founded my own company which is called Future Reflect. So I would like to talk to you tonight about fear because I think fear is something we all know very well but we don't talk about it very often and we don't like to think about it generally so we try to push it away a little bit. But the problem with fear is it's something that doesn't really go away by itself. So I think we need to face it and we need to confront it in order to continue growing and really be able to follow our dreams in the end. So what is fear? It's of course a very powerful and strong emotion which also affects us quite much on a physical level. And it's controlled by a very old part in our brain which is called the amygdala and that's also responsible for aggression. And of course generally fear I think is something that is it's actually a really important emotion as well because it also protects us from potentially dangerous situations. So it's not that I'm saying fear is all bad, but I think there's different types of fear. And the type of fear I would like to talk to you about tonight is the fear that kind of holds us back, that makes us afraid of trying out something new or trying out a new challenge, following our dreams in the end of wh where we want to go. So that's the type of fear I think we shouldn't accept, but we should try to overcome. Interestingly, I think fear it mostly happens unconsciously, so we are not really aware about how it affects us or when we react to it. It kind of happens to us. So I would like to think about two situations which I think are really important to progress, professionally especially, and fear kind of holds us back from this progression. One of them is, I think it's really important to leave your comfort zone. And so why? <laughs> and I think this is really nice to kind of <laughs> explain it all. Yeah. Because basically, your comfort zone, that's where it's like really nice and cozy. And you know everything, and you know everyone, and you've kind of established yourself. You're somehow a little bit stagnant. You're not really learning a lot of new things anymore. But on the other hand, this is where the magic happens. Everything is new. We're a little bit beginners again, and it's kind of uncomfortable. Um, but this is where we are really um, open to try and learn something new, and we're really expanding. But I think this is where fear comes in, because fear tells us we should stay here, because that's where it's really safe. Now we're thinking about this now, and actually I think it's such an illusion, because it's actually the opposite. It's more dangerous staying in your comfort zone. Because what happens? You stop. You become kind of heavy and you become really afraid of what's out there. I think when we leave our comfort zone, it makes us more agile. And it also gives us confidence if we're confronted with something that is new, we can handle it. And I think it also has a lot to do with actually being open to change and not just waiting for change to happen to you, but making it happen. I really like this one. <laughs> and so, for my part, I've had some situations in the last years where I really made some kind of big decisions. So, for example, two years ago I moved to London and I was working before in an agency in Vienna and I had a nice job and I had nice colleagues and the office was great. And but I kind of felt that was not really all I wanted to do, but there was something more out there which I wanted to do. So I decided that London would be a really good place for me to come and I wanted to work on more international projects and so do something more innovative, which is really important creatively for me. And um, But that was something quite scary to do because I basically had to move city and I had to move job at the same time. I'm sure some of you have made this experience as well. It's something that's quite unsettling and kind of a big, big scary move. But it's usually something that's quite good for you because you learn a lot in the whole process. And, and then the second thing, which was actually one of the scariest things I've ever done, was last year I decided to go freelance. And <laughs> so there were several things that were going through my head. And I was like, on the one hand side, I had a good job in a big digital agency. 
I was like, okay, I would like to move on from there. So what shall I do? I didn't really want to go to another permanent job, but I wanted to, I was thinking, I'm in London. There's so many amazing agencies. I would like to see a few different ones before I start going permanent again. Um, so that was one of the reasons. And the second reason was that I felt I wanted to be more in control of my time again. So that was the second reason that I thought freelancing actually sounds really interesting. So I got good feedback about that as well. Um, and I made the decision, I handed in my notice. And the first few weeks were kind of okay. And then at the end of my notice period, I started to get really scared. And I was thinking, what have I done? How am I going to pay my bills? Maybe I don't get any job. What's going to happen? So it was really kind of this big jump into the dark. And now if I look back, it was just one year ago, I would really never change anything. It was one of the best decisions I've done, but it was at the same time one of the scariest decisions I've ever done. And so thinking about that, I realized that maybe if you make a decision and you kind of feel that it's the right thing to do and you know it's something you want to do and you get really scared of it, that only means that you are doing the right thing, that you're really pushing and that you're really leaving your comfort zone. So what I've come to believe because of that is that actually you have to scare yourself because otherwise you will just end up doing the same thing that you've always been doing already. And kind of this fear is part of the thing, you can't get around it. Think about when was the last time you left your comfort zone? <laughs> <laughs> When was that? How was that? You don't have to talk about it, just think about it for yourself. <laughs> and then I would like to know, how did it feel? Was it a bit scary to do that? No, you don't have to write it down, just think about it and kind of remember how that felt. Oh, yeah. And maybe if you want, put your hands up if it felt scary to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think what is actually quite interesting and what we don't realize most of the time, everyone else is scared as well. <laughs> so if you think of somebody who you really admire and who has done a lot of great things, so they have been there as well and it hasn't been easy for them and they have been scared as well, but maybe they just pushed through it because the interesting thing is with something that you practice, you eventually get better at it. And maybe it's not that scary anymore at some point, if that ever happens. But <laughs> so I think in the end, there's actually only one trick. You've got to embrace the fear and do it anyways. So it's actually not really a trick. You just have to push through it. And then something else what I think fear holds us back from doing, but what is actually really important, ask for what you want. And um, when I was in my early 20s, I read a book from my mom and I thought it was really interesting. It was called The Aladdin Factor. And it's about how to ask for what you want. And when I read that, I realized that asking is actually a really important skill, which we need a lot. But quite often we don't really ask for what we want. So why? Why is that? And one of the reasons is fear. So for example, we're afraid of being rejected if we ask for something, or of kind of looking stupid in front of other people, or having an obligation to someone if we ask someone for something. Lots of different reasons from fear. But actually, if we manage to overcome this fear and say, OK, I don't care, I will ask anyway, there's a lot of benefits from asking. And so there were, there's actually a few things when I read this book which I thought were really inspiring. And um, I would like, uh, now 10 years or much or more later on, I still find they're relevant. So I thought I would like to share them with you. Um, the one thing that I found particularly striking as well was this, basically, if you don't ask, you don't get. Because just think about it, other people can't really read your mind. So if you don't say it, how will they know what you want? They don't. What I thought was really interesting is you can ask for anything. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so basically, you can ask for a hug, for listening, for forgiveness, for attention, or for time. You can ask for a favor, for someone to keep a secret, or for a better table. 
<laughs> you can ask for a vacation, for a raise, for a promotion, for more responsibility, for less responsibility, for shorter meetings or less paperwork, anything basically. And what I found very nice is, the answer is yes, but you have to ask. <laughs> So that made me really feel like actually it's a wasted opportunity if you don't even try, if you don't even ask. Because quite often people might be happy to help you if you ask them. So, and also asking as if you expect to get it, kind of having this positive attitude already. Because other people notice it if you ask in that way. But also if the answer isn't yes, don't take no personally. Because in the end, no isn't anything about you. There are so many factors in the background, and quite often it's not the right match, or it's not the right time. And another door will open usually, and that's maybe the better one. So don't get discouraged if there's a no along the way. Don't wait. Time will never be just right. <laughs> so I'm sure you all know it. It's quite often it's like we try to push it to some point in the future, and maybe we're going to do it. But actually, there is no perfect moment. Or we will wait forever for that to happen. <laughs> and actually, in this time, we could already be doing what we want to be doing, and we could already be getting better at it. So we don't really want to lose this time. But fear is always trying to hold us back from that. So how can we try to overcome our fears? And that's, of course, a, quite a big question. I don't have the perfect answers, but I've been just thinking about some things that I found helpful and maybe you will as well. So one thing is pretty simple, just observe them, because um, generally they affect us on an unconscious level, so we're not really aware of it. Um, so just starting to pay attention when we feel fear and when we're reacting out of fear is something that fear doesn't like very much, let's say like that, because it likes to operate in the dark, and it's as soon as you start putting some light on it and actually noticing it, it's not that strong anymore, suddenly. So that's a really good starting point, I think. Observing them is one thing, and another thing that I think is interesting as well is analyzing them. And it sounds very sophisticated, but it's quite simple, and actually, um, at this point, I would like you all to do a little experiment just for yourself. You don't have to share it with anyone. So maybe you have found some um, kind of cards on your um, chair. And if you can grab a pen, I think you can help to write it down as well. <laughs> so I'd just like to take a moment and I would like you to think of something that you would really like to do, but you feel afraid of it and just write it down, or draw it, or whatever you feel like. I would like you to take a moment and think about what is the worst thing that could happen if you did that? <laughs> <laughs> so could you survive it? <laughs> it's a good start already. <laughs> Sometimes it's also that we would actually end up in the same place that we already are. So would, would you end up worse or would you end up where you already are? Because somebody, for example, says no if you ask something. What would be the best thing that could happen? If everything worked out ideally. <laughs> so after everything you know now, just finally I would like you to think about what is most likely to happen and also write it down. Quite often what is most likely to happen is not that bad after all. <laughs> or at least it could even be something pretty good. I think that helps to kind of get a bit more in touch what it's all about. And maybe it's not that bad, but it just feels so big if we don't think about it. So now as a third thing that I think is helpful, practicing to be brave and practicing to be courageous. And by that I don't mean tackling the biggest, most important plan that you've been always trying to do immediately. <coughs> but kind of little small st steps every day that you find a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit like, oh, shall I say something now in this meeting? Yes. <laughs> 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 so kind of just pushing yourself a little bit permanently. And the good thing is, ev like with everything that we practice, we actually get better at it. So if you practice being courageous, 
it also gives you more confidence and Pia doesn't like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> so if you start becoming more confident, then Pia will not have so much control about you anymore. Because what I really like <laughs> never gets easier. You just get better. <laughs> so, and the last thing which I think is also important is embrace failure. So don't have all these super high expectations on yourself because then you will never even start trying. It's okay. I think in the end it comes down more to the experience of trying something new and learning and growing that is actually much more important than everything going right immediately. But giving ourselves permi permission to fail, whatever happens, it's okay. Usually we don't fail anyway, but some situations it doesn't go out in plan. It's okay as well. That's life. <laughs> move on and I mean it's easier said than done of course but I think that's kind of the mindset that is helpful for actually starting new things and trying something. Yeah, so what I really like as well is this. <laughs> Which I think says quite a lot. <laughs> so thank you.